In this video, we are going to talk about how to plan a 10-day trip to Italy. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. For thousands of years, Italy has attracted history, food, wine, and culture enthusiasts from all over the world. And it's not hard to see why. Italy is a sensory overload, with everything from romantic crumbling ruins and welcoming hosts to specialized dishes and some of the world's most famous art. The greatest 10-day Italy itinerary encourages tourists to try a bit of everything. Here's how to prepare for a 10-day trip to Italy. Day 1. Rome. Because international flights are readily available in Rome, your 10-day Italy itinerary begins there. Rome, in fact, has two international airports. Arrive early in the morning to maximize your time in Rome on day one. While seeing the attractions of Rome takes at least three days, you can still see a lot in just two days on your whirlwind tour of Italy. Spend the afternoon and evening exploring the historic district. Trevi Fountain, Pantheon, Piazza Navona, Spanish Steps, and Sunset at Pincio are among the highlights. On the west side of the Villa Borghese sits Pincio Hill. The wonderful first evening in Rome is enhanced by live music and dramatic architecture. Make the most of your time in Rome by trying authentic Roman cuisine. Try Antisha Barreria Peroni for lunch, a traditional and cheap eatery popular with locals. However, arrive early, noon or 1 p.m., to avoid the crowds. Here, fish pizzas are a specialty. Scampi, mussels, and squid are examples of fruits of the sea. Cheese is usually not included. The quality is excellent because the fish is caught fresh every day. Go to a Spaghetteria for dinner. Spaghetteria Larchetto serves authentic Roman cuisine in a relaxed setting, with a variety of tasty pasta selections ranging from zucchini pasta to pasta with jalapeno peppers. Day 2. Rome again. Start your second day in Rome the Italian way, with a cappuccino and possibly a little sandwich at a nearby bar. Il Barreto is an excellent pick because it is close to your first stop, the Colosseum. Arrive at the Colosseum early, no later than 8.30 a.m., to avoid the midday heat and avoid the crowds. Purchasing skip-the-line tickets ahead of time is key to making the most of your quick tour of Rome. Purchase Rome skip-the-line tickets now. If there's one place in Rome where you'd like to avoid the line, it's at the Colosseum. You'll be glad you bought tickets in advance online rather than waiting in a long line in the scorching sun. The Colosseum, Palatine Hill, and the Roman Forum are all included in one skip-the-line ticket. Assume that exploring the Colosseum and Roman Forum will take the entire morning. The Colosseum in Rome is the world's biggest amphitheater, with a capacity of 80,000 spectators for its legendary gladiator fights. It's an event you won't want to miss. The Forum is a rectangular plaza in Rome that served as the heart of everyday life and a central market area during Roman times. It has been named the world's most famous meeting spot throughout history. Visit La Taverna dei Fori Imperiali for lunch. Try the burrata ravioli, which are loaded with burrata cheese and veggies. It's only the lunch that will maintain your walking stamina up for the remainder of the day. Where should you stay in Rome? The Colosseum and the Roman Forum are both within walking distance of the inn at the Roman Forum. It's warm, modern, and in a fantastic location. Apartment in the heart of the Spanish steppes staying in this lovely vacation apartment will make you feel like a local. All of the major attractions are within walking distance. Day 3. Perugia. Moving out of the major cities and tourist traps is the greatest way to explore Italy. Visit Perugia. The drive from Rome to Perguia, the capital of the Umbria region, takes about two hours, so get up early the next day, as you'll only have one day to see everything. Perugia is a gorgeous destination because it is constructed on a hilltop and surrounded by valleys and mountains. Indeed, it is well known for its atmosphere and outstanding Middle Ages and Renaissance monuments. It's also known for its beautiful churches, old structures, magnificent museums, and excellent local restaurants. The surrounding countryside is brimming with spectacular landscapes and national parks, making it the ideal blend of historic and natural attractions. Because you only have one day in Perugia, spend the morning exploring the city before traveling to one of the adjacent national parks, Lake Trasimeno. Perugia Accommodations 
Stay in a castle, Castello di Monterone is a 13th-century castle perched atop a hill with a panoramic patio and a fantastic on-site restaurant. Day 4. Assisi. Assisi is only a 30-minute drive from Perugia, so it's a wonderful day trip from Perugia. Since the 13th century, pilgrims have flocked to Assisi, a hill town. After all, Assisi is where St. Francis was born and buried. However, you do not need to be devout to appreciate this wonderful village. Because of its location between the Umbrian Hills and the Monte Sebastio Woodlands, Assisi is one of the best places to visit in Italy. It's one of Italy's most fascinating medieval villages. Assisi Accommodations Stay at an Agriturismo and Assisium Agriturismos are farm stay programs for travelers all throughout Italy. You get to stay in a wonderful villa with breakfast and help locals at the same time. Everyone's favorite farm stay in Assisi is Assisium Agriturismo. With easy access, plenty of parking, and breathtaking vistas, you might never want to leave. Day 5. Siena. It's time to travel to Tuscany. Perhaps the most gorgeous destinations on this Italy trip are Florence and the Tuscany area. Start in Siena. Because it's halfway between Perugia and Florence, it's a natural next stop. Stay here for the night before traveling to Florence. Siena is an excellent spot to gain a sense of what life was like in the Middle Ages. The medieval square Piazza del Campo, one of Europe's most famous medieval squares, is the most unusual location here. Another local favorite is Osteria il Gratisiello in Siena. It has been serving classic Tuscan cuisine since 1840. Where should you stay in Siena? Stay in the penthouse San Francesco in the heart of the city this rooftop penthouse is of value, located just steps from Siena's historic center. Two large patios welcome you to have a bottle of wine while watching the sunset over the city. Day 6. Florence. After breakfast, you'll be ready to explore Florence, or Firenze in Italian, the jewel of Tuscany. Florence was the center of trade and banking in medieval Italy. It's also known as the Athens of the Middle Ages and as the birthplace of the Renaissance. The ancient center, the Duomo Santa Maria del Fiore, the Opera del Duomo, the Basilica of Santa Croce, the famed Ponte Vecchio Bridge, and a sunset in Piazzale Michelangelo are all highlights of your stay. What hotels are available in Florence? Palazzo Vecchietti is a 16th-century boutique hotel in the center of Florence, only steps from the Duomo. The hotel accommodations are large and elegant. The rooftop garden is a perfect area to enjoy sunset cocktails while listening to the city bells chime. Day 7. Luca and Pisa. Because Luca is only an hour away from Florence, spend the morning there before heading to nearby Pisa for the afternoon. Luca is a historic city with a lovely historic center start your day by sampling classic Italian pastries at Pasticceria Taducci. Then take a stroll through this walkable tiny town's lovely squares and streets. After lunch at Trattoria Langolo Tonda, the pizzas are particularly noteworthy, travel to Pisa. It'll just take you 30 minutes to get there. The world-famous Leaning Tower of Pisa, the massive church, and the baptistry may all be found in Pisa. Seeing these iconic monuments with your own eyes is quite satisfying. Day 8, Cinque Terre. Spend Day 7 in Cinque Terre instead of Pisa and Lucca if you want to see more of the Mediterranean while in Italy. The Cinque Terre, or Five Towns, are a collection of picturesque fishing villages on the northern Italian Riviera in Liguria. Monterosso, Bernaza, Corniglia, Manarola, and Rio Maggiore are among the communities that have been designated as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It's a 2.5-hour train travel from Florence to Cinque Terre via La Spezia, so it's doable as a day trip, but you might want to stay overnight to maximize your time in these charming villages. Because automobiles are not permitted in the Cinque Terre, use the rail. With its beautiful port, bright beach umbrellas, and pastel-washed houses, Vernazza is the crown jewel of the villages. Rio Maggiore is likewise a must-see. Day 9. Lake Como. It's time to bid Florence farewell and head north for a four-hour journey to picturesque Lake Como before flying home from neighboring Milan. This is an excellent place to take a break from your vacation. Another excellent option is the nearby Lake Maggiore. In Stresa, a trip to the Borromean Islands in the middle of the lake is a must. 
Spend your second day on the water, either by ferry or by renting a boat, about plus or minus 60 euros per hour, including petrol, and exploring some of the lake's charming towns. For example, Bellagio, a luxurious and picturesque village perched on a peninsula, is well worth a few hours of your time. Where can I stay near Lake Como? In Bellagio, stay at Hotel Florence. Hotel Florence features a sauna, hot tub, and a nice on-site restaurant and is only a three-minute walk from the ferry terminal. It also includes a complimentary breakfast every day. Day 10. Flight back to Milan. One of the finest reasons to end your 10 days in Italy at lovely Lake Como is its proximity to Milan. In roughly an hour, you can drive from Lake Como to Milan Airport. Spend a day or an afternoon in Milan if you have extra time. The Milan Cathedral is a magnificent example of Italian Gothic architecture that took over 600 years to build. It is conveniently positioned in the middle of the city. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.